Sometimes you want to filter or highlight dependent on something that is in a cell, but also sometimes you want it in a list. So if I change that to Pete, then I will change the ones that are highlighted. My name is David and I'm going to have tons of videos on Excel, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams. If you're using Tech of the Workplace, I'm covering my channel. I love talking about the new stuff and some little known tricks. So in this video, we're going to look at how to highlight and how to filter based on a list. So let's get started. So let's start with filtering, which is easier. You'd have to write any formulas for it. So what you do is you select your data and then you go to the data tab and you choose advanced. If you've wondered what advanced does, this is one of the things that it can do. So criteria range here, I'm going to select that and I'm going to press OK. And it's now only going to filter the ones there. So 4th of April, 4th of April, 15th of Feb, 15th of Feb, etc. And this is dynamic, but you do need to refresh it manually. So if I was to make this the 5th of April, then if I were to go here again, and I need to press OK again, and then it will update and reduce that list. Now, if you want to get rid of the filter, you don't have the filter icons here, but you can clear it, or you can just click on the filter icon there as well, and that will also clear it. Now, you can do the same thing with text. Note that you have to have the same name of the column here as the name of the column here. So if I were to change this to person like that, then it will actually not work because the way the advanced filter works is that it looks for the same matching name. There you go. It's not giving me anything. But if I were to change this to name and then was to do that and press OK again, now this works fine. There you go. So that's all of these. It doesn't matter if it's lowercase or uppercase. We did that in the example before that it will pick up. The advanced filter can also take it on multiple columns. So if I want everyone who is 4th of April and Kelly, every row that is 15th of March and Pete, I can put them like this. And you can even mix and match. So it could be like this one. This could be all the Pete's, but only Kelly in that row, etc., etc. Let's see what that gives. So advanced filter and now in criteria range, I'm going to select this. The other options are just what you might expect. Copy to another location and then copy to this location. So it just gives you the filtered list there, which is just Kelly on the fourth, both the Pete's, because there are only two Pete's, and Faye on the 15th, there are none. So that's and criteria. You also have all criteria. So this will mean everyone who is on the 20th of Jan, regardless of the name, and Lisa, every row for Lisa. So if I select that, and then I go to advanced, and I choose list range, criteria range I'm going to choose here and I'm going to say filter it in place so I don't need that one even though it's there it's grayed out press ok and that will only show me those both the leases because there are only two and this is the one person on the 20th of Jan by the way the other thing in here is just unique records only so remove the duplicates hide the duplicates etc I don't usually do it that way I have other ways that I do duplicates control shift out love this shortcut just add a remove filters really really quickly now, what about highlighting? Highlighting, you do have to write a formula. So it uses conditional formatting, which is really, really useful. Conditional formatting can highlight text based on what's in it. So I could, for example, select this column if I want to. Let's deselect the header, usually good practice. And you can do highlight cell rules, text that contains. And let's say that I want Donna to be in green. I can do it like this, and this will highlight based on that. I love conditional formatting. Not enough people use it. Really, really useful. But it doesn't have something to do it based on a list by default. So you do have to manually do that through creating your own custom formula. So let's write down the formula here to see what it is. So if I do equals count ifs, and I'm going to select my criteria range, which is the other table, it's going to be for date. Press F4 to lock that in so it doesn't move up and down as I drag this down and then my criteria is just going to be this cell this date cell close my brackets and it's going to tell me zero and if i drag this down it's going to tell me one where it finds it and zero where it doesn't find it so this is kind of what you want it to return for conditional formatting to work you want it to return a true or false a zero or one etc etc so if i were to take this formula and select it on conditional formatting, it would work. So I'm going to select this, the date column. I'm going to go to conditional formatting, and I'm going to go to new rule. Here is where you can write a custom formula for your rule by clicking on this. And then here I'm going to paste 
There is nothing to help you write this formula, so I do recommend doing it in a cell first and then seeing how it evaluates before you lock it in. So I'm gonna to go to format and I'm gonna choose, say a light blue background and then okay. And now it's selected 15th of Feb, all the ones that are from this list, it shows them in blue over here. I'm going to select this. I'm just gonna do it in the middle. Note that I do need to select from the topmost cell and you go to new rule and I'm gonna to go to use a formula to determine what to format. So equals count ifs. Notice it doesn't give you the tool tip, which is super handy. That's why I prefer to write the formula over here first. So criteria range is going to be this comma. It does do the dollar signs already. And then my criteria is going to be this one, but it does too many dollar signs. So I have to actually remove the dollar sign before row 11 so it can scroll down. And then I'm gonna to go to format and I'm gonna choose this kind of light purple color. Press okay, okay again. And there you go. Now it's selected both of those. If I were to delete Kelly, you can see that Kelly is gone and replace that with Faye. Note that if you are going to go from the bottom and I'm gonna to go to conditional formatting and new rule. And I'm going to say, use a formula. I'm gonna say equals count ifs, open bracket. Let's do these ones, comma, and then let's do this cell. I take off the dollar sign before 11, format. Choose another color, a gray one, press okay. Okay, you can see what it's done now is it has highlighted this one in gray, but that is not on the list. <laughs> So I'm not sure how it got that from. It basically muddles up if you have your active cell that is not the topmost cell. You can also do it for an entire table. So for example, if I wanna highlight the entire row, start on the top leftmost cell as your active cell, go to conditional formatting and new rule. And I can say equals count ifs. Let's do these three. Comma, and then let's do this cell, remove that. And then in here, I'm going to go with an orange, press okay, okay. And now all the Kellys, all the Pete's, and all the Faye's are highlighted for the entire row. If I were to change Pete to Lisa, we get that happening the other way around. It is difficult to get the rows to highlight depending on multiple criteria. It's doable, but it's further than I'll go in this video. And then just to point out, if you are using tables like this, then advanced filter doesn't change. So if I go to data and advanced, then I'm gonna choose this criteria range. And note that it names the table over here, press okay. And that means that if I add in another date, so let's just change this to the 21st, which isn't on the list and let's add in 20th of Jan 25. So it should remain with this. If I go to advanced and I choose okay again, you do have to manually kind of trigger it. Otherwise it doesn't refresh. So it does actually grow the range if you do the advanced filter. If I use structured table referencing, so I'm gonna instead do equals count ifs, my criteria range is going to be this comma, and my criteria is going to be this one. Close my brackets and this is giving me the same result in the grid. The ones are the ones that are highlighted. However, if I were to copy this formula into the conditional formatting, I'm gonna to go to edit rule, manage rules, and then edit rule. By the way, this is how you can edit or manipulate your rules. And I'm going to paste it in here. So it's saying count ifs, the criteria range is these dates, the date column, that's a structured reference because it's from a table. And look in the table called output at date column. So if I press okay, it tells me it doesn't work. And even if I was to change this to this cell, but remove the dollar sign before 19, and press okay, it also doesn't work. Essentially it doesn't take structured references as far as I can tell. I need to switch this to B4 to 
B10, and then F4, both of them, like this, and then it will work. But even if it shows me that there are no structured references, if I expand the table, it does actually work. So 27th of April, 25, then you can see that now that is highlighted. And if I go back here, conditional formatting manage rules, I can see now that it goes all the way to 11. So this range will actually grow even though it doesn't use the structured referencing in the language, but it does still grow automatically. All right, well, that's what I wanted to show you here. I hope you've enjoyed this video. My name is David and I have tons of videos on Excel, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams. If you're using Tick of the Workplace, I'm covering my channel. So check out my other videos if you like this one. Thanks for watching.